Hello. Quillers have been using the prongs of a comb, an onion holder, a pet comb, ever since the 1980s. I was then re originally encouraged into it by the great corn dolly maker, Neil Thwaites, who taught me how to do this sort of thing which is called a sprayer. It's a Swiss con, uh, straw work technique um, and I'm sure it's familiar to an awful lot of quillers. But it's been only fairly recently that I've um, got into developing comb quilling in a different way. I feel that this is more related to original antique quillings, mainly because it is viewed on its edge, mostly. Anyway, that's a big discussion, so let's move swiftly on. So, the simplest thing that you can do on a comb, really, um, is a crimp, probably. Um, now, I know that you can, we can crimp using a couple of cogs um, and simply put the strip through the cogs. But I just feel that the securing strip that goes on the back is more easily attached to the crimp um, and is an extremely useful part of it. So um, I'm going to show you on um, this pet comb how I would normally go about it. Um, the first thing I do is to put a, a loop on the end um, of my strip. I'm using five millimeter here. You could use three or you can use anything actually. Um, and um, I put a little loop on the end of mine and I work top to bottom. Um, but you could work the other way if you like. Um, obviously the uh, closer together your um, prongs are the tighter crimp you're going to get. Um, I would normally work like this. Um, yeah, it's like some combs have got extremely close prongs and some have got extremely far away so it depends doesn't it which you which you want to do. So um, I, I like this size particularly um, and these pet combs are fairly easily available and um, not very expensive. So I would normally continue like this and backwards and forwards until I get to the bottom. Um, and you get better at this as you know time goes on. People sometimes say this is very time consuming when they first start but you know like everything else, you get faster at it. Um, and I can push this right over to the edge here if I wanted to make it um, perfectly straight, which is a good idea when I when I stick on my um, securing strip onto the back because now I know that it's perfectly straight because it's against the edge. So on the back, well, it could be the front for this one because it's such a simple one, but for the um, I'll put it on the back. Uh, so what I would then do to get the securing strip on is put a little dot of glue on the back of every little, um, is that a zig or a zag? Uh, yeah, every little crimp, um, like so and then I'll get my securing strip, whatever that I've chosen, whatever colour I've chosen for that, and now I can really, really press on this because it still is on the comb. We can imagine trying to attach uh, a crimp that you've put through a cog and make sure that a flat strip sticks perfectly to it. That's not so easy if it's not on a comb. Whereas with a comb you can press like that and make sure that it um, it is secure before you start to um, take it off. And then it is 
um, finished. Now I'll just get another one. Here's one I made earlier um, because I'm confident this one is dry. What you can now do, having, having finished the whole the comb, if you want um, your crimp to be really nice and long, is you can then take the bottom um, crimp and push it onto the top prong again and then um, basically off you go again with the securing strip down the back waiting for when you've done some uh, extra crimping so you can keep on um, going as long as you like and make really really long crimps if you like um, depending if you wanted to make a big border or something so add more strip keep on going make it um, as long as you like so for example when I make this thing um, I just these are like several crimps that are uh, glued together um, and um, not only is it extremely strong um, but also I didn't have any worries about how long I could have gone on forever so it's quite a good um, useful sort of thing to be able to do so you can see that uh, a, cr a simple crimp makes a lovely border for your quilling um, as simple as that um, but if you put your if you put two strips of crimp together you can get a different effect so let me just show you uh, what we can do here I've got two pieces of simple crimp with a nice securing strip on the back made on a curl um, and if I put them back to back like this we get that effect that I showed you with this one that I've already glued together. On its own, a simple crimp will have will be quite bendy, which can be useful. If you stick two together, they then become quite a lot more rigid, but they're still bendy, they'll still go around corners even though they're glued. And back to back, that, that is a nice effect. Can you also see that if I put them back to back, but not directly opposite each other, I'm going to get a different effect. So if I slide this along a little bit, you can see it's more of a sort of wavy effect um, than the other one. It's a slightly different effect. And then if I put them um, face to face with the crimps going in to each other, we get a different effect again. Um, and when you actually glue them like that, you get a very strong um, piece of quilling. So if you need strength for anything in your quilling, that's, this is a really a good choice. There's a reason why corrugated card um, is used for strong boxes. Um, this is a really uh, effective, but it's also just effective because if you want a nice straight line, um, you know, you can use it in a straight sort of fashion and um, uh, you know, all of these things are just uh, different ways of using crimping to enhance your quilling. So another nice, simple, but very effective technique you can do is this simple looping one, um, which I'm going to demonstrate to you here on this rather hefty uh, pet comb. They're coming all sorts of shapes and sizes, but it doesn't matter. It's the prongs that are important. Are they the distance apart that you'd like them to be? So to do the a simple looping method, again, I have made a loop in the end of my strip. I'm going to slot it over my top prong, my favorite thing to do. And then um, the strip is at the back um, and I'm going to do the simplest, uh, littlest loop I can do. So to do that, I've brought the strip back to the front with only two prongs showing. Um, this is because I'm going to make tiny loops. I could do it three, four, five, six loops big, 
but I want to do tiny loops so I'm just going to do um, two prongs there. Now I'm going to make the loop itself and to do that I just pick up um, the uh, prong above where I am. So I'll just leave that there for you to see for a second. And then I'll slide it across here um, so that it's in line with the top loop. And then to finish it off, I simply go to the back again. And that has created a tiny loop between these two prongs. I'm on the back again, so all I do is repeat now. So I'm coming down another two prongs and I'm going to pick up the prong above like this. Slides into position and to finish it off, it's going back into the section um, that we've already used. I'm at the back again. So same procedure, coming down only two because I want a little loop. I'm going to pick up the one above, like so. Slide it across. And then when I come back, it will be going into the same slot um, as before. So you simply continue, obviously, in this fashion, um, making loops in the same way um, for as long as you want your work to be. Um, I won't, I'll do a few more for you, but I won't do too many because it's fairly obvious what's going on. Um, picking up the one above. Back in. Coming down two. Picking up the one above. And you could continue all the way down. So then, in order to keep it safe, of course, the usual procedure, when I'd finished the whole strip, I would then put dots of glue on the back of each of these, and um, then put on my securing strip in whatever colour I'm wanting to do. Press, press, press really hard. This is really uh, helpful that you, that you are on a, a comb and you can press the glue into place. I'll be waiting around. And then you slide it off. So this is the effect you're going to get. And here's one, a longer one that I made earlier out of an orange strip. And you can see the full, the full strip has got uh, a set of nice loops and in this case tiny ones but they could be bigger they could be like this one um, so in that case I would simply um, as you will have guessed I'm starting at the top and this time I'm going to come down say well it could be three it could be four it could be five loops let's do five loops and then in the same way as before right back up and pick up that top prong and then come back down and into the slot that you just left and again down four is that one or is it five very good back in same sort of thing and you will then end up with bigger loops so um, it depends exactly what you want to do and uh, I just want to show you some interesting things so here have got a set of big loops here um, you can again as before these uh, loopy things can be placed back to back so they make quite good vegetation, they make good Christmas in green, they make good uh, Christmas greenery um, back to back like this. 
Um, they could be directly opposite each other, the loops, just like with crimping, or they can be offset to give it perhaps a, a more natural look. Um, and then you can do this thing that, uh, again, where we can place them inside each other. So um, to do each one at a time, actually, um, so that you get a loop inside, a loop. And it, it gives a very, keep going, it gives a really nice effect. Here's one that I did with the smaller, the smaller loops that I did before. And again, look how strong it is. Now it's, now they're all inside each other. And that's quite a pretty effect as well, isn't it? It's, it's almost like a zip. You can un, undo it like a, like a zip. When you put it back together again, you've got to do one at a time. But you can pull it apart like a zip. And so you can use uh, these in uh, similarly in the same sorts of ways that we've got back, backwards and forwards as well is also quite useful. There's a, um, a good variety of things you can do with these. So um, if you make these loops different sizes as you go along, um, they become almost um, fern-like. Things. So um, I'll just do you a quick demo of what I mean. Um, again, I've slotted my um, strip onto the end here. And I'm going to start with the tiniest uh, loop I can make, uh, like so. So only using um, two prongs and to the back. And then next time I'm going to use three prongs. One, two, three. See those three showing? And go to the top. And then I'll go to the back again. And now I'll do four prongs. So I'm getting sort of steadily uh, bigger as I go. Um, we could even come down to five. You can see that the loops as we go are getting are getting bigger. Um, I'm making them in exactly the same way, but um, they're just getting bigger each time. You can stay there actually, you know, with them that shape. Um, but another thing we can do is get smaller again. So if I go down from my five loops, I'm going to go down to only four. That brings me down here. Um, and then I can do three. I'm wondering now if my strip's going to run out. Right? Yeah, three. And back again. Hmm, I think I've worked it exactly right. So my final one will be a, a tiny loop again with only two uh, prongs being used for it. And then to the back. So loops getting bigger, up to five prongs big and then smaller. And then we'll go on to the back as usual. And because of course we have to have the securing strip going here. Um, yes, let's use this for a securing strip. If it were long enough, I can even use the same strip if I don't mind it being the same look that a bit too short. I'll just finish it off with an extra bit. There we go. So long as it has secured it, it'll be fine. Something that will hold it all in place. Press like mad to make sure it has dried. Again, I, I would leave it a bit longer if I wasn't showing you. Okay, press. Take it off. Now we have um, loops getting steadily bigger. So um, here's one that I made before, also loops getting steadily bigger. Um, and you can see that they will look more like a sort of fern or leaf sort of a shape if they were uh, glued together. So yeah, change the size of your loops. Um, these ones will still bend if you want to give them a nice elegant uh, 
bend, they will still bend a little bit even when they're glued together. So um, yes, a useful thing uh, to be doing. So everybody loves a heart, don't they? Um, everybody likes to have a little row of hearts, maybe, for a border. So, um, I'll just show you how I go about making those. I've got my usual um, loops. These were made around four prongs, um, so that you can sort of see the size of them. Um, and what I do is I pull them up to a point, so they're standing up. Um, so that I know where the middle is, that's the most important thing. And then I grasp them with my tweezers. Um, take them down, um, right quite far down. Now the tricky bit is just making sure that stays there while I give it a bit of a extra tweak and then I have a heart. If, um, sometimes I put a little extra dot of glue just in there, um, just to make sure if I want the heart to just stay in that uh, position, I might put an extra bit of glue in there um, and press it together with my tweezers. I hope you can see that. So this is how I go about making little hearts. Uh, there are other ways actually, but um, that's uh, that's the way I generally make them now. So the thing to um, keep in mind is that these loops that we have made don't have to remain as simple loops. We can um, alter them to make them uh, different, not necessarily uh, better, but just uh, different, more interesting perhaps. So one thing that I can do is I can stand my loop up like this um, and I can use my um, needle tool to reshape it. Because it's a loop, I can slot the needle tool in um, to the top of it, uh, like so. And then I can roll it down. Let's see this. And then remove the tool, and what we've got now is a nice roll. So, uh, yeah, that can that can be very uh, useful. Um, another thing we could do is having stood the loop up, is we can roll it again, um, but this time instead of rolling. Um, from the top. You see the last one I rolled from the top here. Um, I'm going to roll from down there because this will create something uh, a bit different, I hope. Be able to see this. Mm, it needs popping open a little bit. Sometimes they need a little bit of encouragement to know where they're going. So now I can roll this down. You see as I'm rolling what happens is that that front bit there bellied out and gets a pot belly a bit like Paddington Bear. No, not Paddington. Pooh Bear or uh, Mr. Greedy. Sort of bellowing out here, which I like a lot. And the, the lower down you do this, the more the thing will um, belly out, or the different shape you'll get. So, um, you have to decide where, pretty much where you're going to put this um, tool. So, this side or this side, I'll do it from this side this time. And roll it this way. You can see that we're getting a, these sorts of strange belly down shapes which really do look rather good. And then, um, you know, the longer the loop 
Um, obviously the bigger this will be. Um, but just keep in mind you've got loops here that you can do all kinds of things with, um, especially with the help of your uh, needle tools. So um, this nice loopy effect thing can stay like that as we've seen but it, we can also, things get quite exciting really because we can also uh, alter those loops um, and one thing that we can do is um, straighten them up so that they stand up like so. We can pop them open and I find the easiest way to do this is to put my tweezers in and then release them. We get a nice uh, round circular shape. We'll do that again. So you'd stand them up and pop my tweezers, fine tweezers inside, open them and uh, they make a nice circle. We could have um, rows of this if we liked. Um, another thing, we can just do another one of those. Open. There we go. Another thing we can do <coughs> is to actually um, squash them flat. So having popped them open, we can then flatten them. Yeah, so we make a sort of a flat shape. Which doesn't look, <coughs> excuse me, doesn't look very interesting at this point, but a whole row of them um, does look quite good, and they sort of uh, almost overlap each other like like this. So that's uh, something else we can do with them. Um, and then another thing that we could do is to again start with the popping open, and then. Um, I can take hold of the top here, give it a press down, so that we get this sort of dome shape, what do you call it? Almost a square you could make it into, couldn't you? So you can sort of reshape these things. Um, <clears throat> and also, uh, we could do that even more. So I can press it down with my tweezers really firmly. Um, like so. Really, really far down. So that we get that sort of shape. Tweezers do help enormously with these uh, shaping, I find. You might think not. Okay, so you can see that um, circular thing that I just made for you in this sea of Catherine. Um, I've backed this as I often do. Um, the securing strip is a crimp, which um, gives it a lot of strength. So that's um, uh, that's making a nice and interesting sea. Um, uh, just moving along a little bit. Um, the tea has got normal loops in, as you see, and. Um, these are loops together um, and on the H um, we've got the domes that I just showed you and um, also on the R here See those pink ones they're all just dome shapes um, and uh, on the E inside I've, I've put those not, not quite dome shapes they were the probably one of the first ones that I showed you. These um, amazing letters are lovely to do, so exciting because you can do something different all the time. You know you can do capital letters, you can do um, minuscules, oh sorry that's a, that's a calligraphy term, you can do lowercase letters, you can mix them all up together, you can have them dancing around, um, they're great fun. So uh, here are some even more um, shaped loops. Um, if you like tiny, then that, that's great. I'm going to make some really little ones. And they are um, started in the same way. 
stand the loop up, pop it open uh, with the tweezers. Um, but this time I'm just going to put a little dot of glue in here and just right in, tuck it right down in the corner. Uh, and I'm going to press down again. Um, tweezers are, I would have said, are really important for this one. And if I then, so if I then press really hard, I am at a very strange angle, so but you can pop that right down onto your glue and it will hopefully stay there. It probably won't on this occasion because I'm showing it to you. <laughs> probably work perfectly well otherwise. Um, but you can see that the effect is this, um, I don't know what to call it, very shaped, curly shape with glue at the base. So you can see here what we were talking about on the sampler. There are the circles and, and then domes. Um, and here are the ones that I just attempted to make didn't work as well as that of course um, and you can make that middle bit even tinier um, and you can also bring it to a point um, at the top so you've got this sort of almost trefoil type thing and then um, putting them back to back two of them back to back is is a, a nice thing to do as well you get this sort of especially if you do it sort of offset like that but you could put them directly opposite each other. I do think it's a particularly um, nice pattern, that one. Right, so these are these nice um, trefoil things. Um, I, if I wanted to make them bigger um, than those that I, that I just showed you, um, I'm going to need a loop that's that big. So to make a, one of them this size requires a loop that size. Um, so you probably already worked out that one of the problems is the, um, with working on a comb and making loops to work with is that the further, um, the, the bigger loop you want, um, the further apart it's going to be. So these little ones that were only three prongs big they're uh, quite close together, so that's okay. Um, these ones are be four or five, so um, they're obviously further apart, so stand them up like there's going to be something of a space between them, whatever I'm doing. And if I really do want uh, loops that size to make these little shapes, then they're going to be very far apart. So, um, I thought to myself, I just wonder if there is a way that I could put them um, closer together uh, and that would mean creating um, loops that were closer together. So, for example, if I can get them this close, I can get round this curve and almost fill it. Okay, so um, thinking about loops that um, were closer together, I want to make a big loop and I don't want them far apart. Um, this is what I thought of. Um, as usual, I've got my little loop on the end and it's going over the top prong. Now I'm about to make my loop, so I'll come to the front. And I'm going to make a very big loop, bigger than I finally intended to be. If I tried to make it the size I finally want it to be and then moved about, the whole thing is just out of control. So what I do is I make a very, very, very big loop and then uh, secure it before I begin to make it the right size. And to secure it, I simply come forwards, backwards and forwards on the in the prongs and then now I can make it the size I want it to be and how do I know what size I want it to be well 
um, I could use a dowel of some sort. So I could use uh, the handle of my needle tool. I could put that in there and pull it and then take it away. And then I know that that's the size that I would like it to be. And I'm ready to make my next loop now. So the same gap, I'm going into the same gap to make this loop. And it's, uh, this next loop is also nice and close to the previous loop. So that goes in there and it's nice and big again so that I'm not concerned about losing it. There we go. To secure it, I'm coming forward, back, forward. Um, I'm only, I could use my finger. If I've decided I would like it to be a bigger loop than a pencil or a needle tool, then I can put my finger in there. And I'll know that that's the right size. And then I'm ready for the next loop. Make it really big and forward, back, forward, um, and then we can maybe I'll do these in threes. Maybe I'll do them like this do a small one with a big one in the middle. Same sort of idea, um, but you simply follow this along. Just don't try to make the loop the size that you want it to finally be first without securing it because it just is out of control in there. Um, you have to make it nice and big, so really, really big. Then uh, secure it by coming forward, back and forward. And then, whatever size you want it to be, at that point, you can make it that size uh, and remove the loop. So now the loops you can see are really close together. Um, so uh, with a the, with the little kink in between, with a little crimp spacer in between, um, which gives you um, even more scope for adapting them. So here is a set of loops that I've done, big loops that I've done uh, uh, in that fashion with the loops nice and close together. Um, and I realised that an added bonus to this method of um, doing loops is that I can work with them, do things to them while they're still on the comb, which gives them a bit more security. Um, uh, so obviously this one has a securing strip on the back um, but once that was dry then I can start doing things with this uh, with the loops and um, you know so if I want to I can get my um, needle tool and I can start rolling etc so we can do that this way and uh, like I said before if I want uh, oh, let me show you that them as they look. Look, just lots of rolls. Um, with the so this is exactly this. With it, except this is three millimeter wide paper, with the little crimp in between that secures it in place, and there are all the single rolls that are going round in that uh, direction. This has a natural curl on it. Um, you can put your um, rolls facing each other, if you like, for a different effect. Um, and you can put them back to back um, for another effect. Um, we can do the one, of course, that um, where instead of being at the top of the loop, I'm going to place my tool down the side a little, like we did before. When I roll this time, um, the coil will sort of belly out. It always reminds me of Mr. Greedy. He looks like that with his pot belly. 
So if I were rolling one in this direction to uh, back to back, uh, then I would be coming round this way a little bit and rolling like this. And then these, um, <laughs> these Mr. Creedy uh, coils will look like that. So, very much like this. These loops evidently were a little bit taller. But this is a, that's an interesting shape, isn't it? That's a nice, interesting shape. Um, and um, these, yeah, various ones that um, make use of these. So you can roll them towards each other instead of back to back to see how that looks. And you can pop your coils underneath each other so that they make this um, interesting sort of shape as well. So each of them has got that little kink between which is securing the loop before you shape it. So when the whole thing is finished and I've shaped it um, the way I want it to be, um, then I can take it off, obviously I can take it off the um, comb at that point. So you can do the same thing with each of your loops. Um, you could do, you could alternate, you could um, do them in twos, you can do them in threes. Um, what I'm saying is different things can happen and um, in this one, particularly this little frame, thought uh, I'm doing things in groups of five. Um, so um, here is a group of five that I haven't um, uh, altered in any way yet. So what we're going to do first of all is the middle one, which needs a little dot of glue in its centre. Then, if you remember, what we did then was um, grasp with the tweezers and push that right down onto the glue. Um, I should really then sit here and hold it for a while, but I don't want to keep you waiting. Okay, that's going to be this one, of course, and that one. So this is the one in the middle. What I've then done is to put a little dot of glue on here and bring the two next ones over the top of that one, the middle one. And then you probably just uh, seen me do the the final two, but um, do them all same. Shouldn't shouldn't that goes the same? But anyway, it should work. Okay, so I want these two um, belly out in that direction. So instead of um, being at the top, though, can you see that first one? Let me just show you what they're looking like. Okay, I'm going to make this um, one go out that way. So instead of being at the top there, I come down a little bit this way so that when I roll, um, get a nice Mr. Greedy. <laughs> and the same thing goes for this one. So I'm rolling out that way. Oops, that way. You can see that. That should finish. Whoops, should finish off my five in a row. Okay. So now the uh, frame itself is is now finished. And uh, snowflake is a nice thing to, to do. Um, we just have to be sure that all the loops, all the things that we do with the loops are uh, the same. So there are in fact uh, lots of, you know, it's going to be six of these. 
which are in fact uh, each one of those is made up of two of these so what I'm going to do for you now is show you how to make that um, one but you you know snowflakes are have got six points so you can do uh, any number of things um, which would work perfectly well as long as you did six of them and they all look the same then that will make a snowflake but anyway this was my um, decision uh, for a snowflake so uh, I've taken my loop up the end prong of course and I'm going to do the smallest uh, simplest loop the very first one I showed you I'm using um, variegated or graduated colour strips here because I think that looks good for the snowflake. So my first one is that tiny little loop. Um, I can actually show you on the finished one. See? There's the there's the, the loop over the end and here is the tiny loop that um, I've just made. Then um, I'm going to come back and do a little crimp before I do the next thing. Uh, no, I'm not. No. I don't think it has one. No, it doesn't. Okay, so now I'm going to do the um, this looping method where um, I'm going back into the same hole um, and I'm going to do, as you know, one of these. So we have to lock it in place, forward, back, and forward before I pull it into the size that I want it to be and it's going to be my finger for this one so that's good size for that um, then I'm going to make another one so again very big loop and then forward back forward put my finger in again so that I know I'm getting these two same sort of size. So they're going to be the top, you can see the top two things are going to get shaped. The second one is the heart. So that's my second loop. Um, then I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm making a third loop and in and back and forward. And this time it's going to be the size of my uh, needle tool. Okay, so it's somewhat smaller this time because you can see that that one is a smaller sort of a shape. And the same thing goes for this one. This one will be the same. So I'll make it, as always, bigger than usual and I need it. And then forward, back, forward, and to get the size the same, I'll use the needle to handle again. Okay, so that's in place. And then, um, so that, that last one will be making this loop. And then there's a couple of crimps here. So I've got one there, so I'll just make another and go to the back. So here is, here is what I've, um, made ready to shape so you can see now that I've um, fixed a, a securing strip to the back as we always do with um, glue um, and here is my here are my loops ready to shape um, so the first one as you can see is one of those so we know how to make that I'm going to put my tool in, oh, let's just see if I can make sure I know where the middle of the top is. Um, but I'm going to start down here so to, to get these out nicely because that's what I'm after. Um, nice to be able to pull against the comb. It's nice that it's on the comb and I can let it go. You can always, of course, uh, loosen if you feel that's a little bit on the tight side it looks a little bit more elegant if I loosen it. The second one is a heart shape, so I'm going to do that with this. Um, bring it up here a little bit. 
a bit. Um, get my tweezers. Remembered about hearts. You get hold of the middle of the top and bring it right down. Squeeze these together with your tweezers so that you now have a see that you now have a heart and have a heart shape there. Um, now this third loop is going to be a smaller one of those. It is a smaller loop, so we're okay there, but it's it's rolling in this direction. So I'm going to go for this way. Right down, move it. I can loosen it a little if I like. And the final one is simply straight. So I'm just going to pop it open like that and maybe just open it a, a wee bit. So that this will be, these two will then be the same, hopefully. Uh, and then I would be putting them back to back uh, to make the shape necessary for the snowflake. So you can see them here. Um, that's the top loop that I've put over the, uh, the, t the top prong. There's the first tiny loop. Here's this first shape. Then the heart. Did them a little off centre this time, didn't I? But they match each other, so that's all right. Another one of those, fine little crimp, and these two sticking out ones, which conveniently uh, meet each other and get glued together. Um, I then s stuck each of these six into this central um, loopy sort of flower to keep it nice and strong. Gave it a solid coil for its middle. Um, so, but like I say, you know, you can, you can um, almost do any things so long as you do them six times and um, glue them together equally it will look like a snowflake. So um, we can make Christmas trees in, in this way as well. You're feeling festive, um, <laughs> slightly crazy Christmas trees, and so they would start. Um, you can probably almost guess now, can't you, how they are made? Um, and they all started with this loopy one, um, which of course is made on here on a, a comb, and I've made my loops getting bigger. And bigger and bigger so I will have stopped made it nice and big and then I've put a um, securing strip on the back um, and it might be nice to put um, a crimp down the middle of this tree and see all of these have got a bit of a crimp down the middle so um, we could then leave it like that that's you know, a loopy sort of a tree uh, or again, you can get your um, needle tool and start rolling. Um, so if I roll this way, and again, I might roll that way. Because the loops are getting bigger, this means, of course, you get that nice tree shape. Um, that Christmas trees are, etc. Um, and each time I'm doing this, I'm getting a little bit of um, bellying out, which is which is sort of quite nice. The bigger the loop, the more. Can you see a little bit of Mr. Greedy is appearing each time of those. Um, and then, uh, but you can, I mean, you can stop it from happening if you like by coming to this side of the loop, sorry, to that side of the loop. So there's the middle of the loop, but if I come down, right down here, I can actually stop um, the sort of bellying out from happening like this. Um, but it depends what you, you know, depends what you're after really. So I happen to want them to, to do this this time. 
So I shouldn't really re reshape things, but I will this time. Um, just to finish off the tree. So we'll start here. And down to there. Etc. Making these get getting gradually bigger. Start at the top. Etc. Okay. And because the loops are getting gradually bigger, then I'm getting a, a bigger and bigger tree. And once I've finished it, because we can carry on and make a huge one if you like, all the way down the bottom. Um, then of course you, I'm going to need to put the two halves together. But with this one. Um, it's a uh, simple rolling and with that one we have a little bit of laying out as we do for this one here. Similar sort of idea, crazy Christmas trees. You can add some baubles if you like, but um, yeah, so it's a nice festive sort of thing to be doing. And um, since we're talking about that, um, I'll just point out a few things that, uh, so you can see what's going on here. Um, this bauble has, is mainly comb quilling. So down at the bottom there, you can see simple looping, followed by a row of crimping. These ones are curls, and I popped one underneath each of them, given two crimps between, two rows of crimping. These are the simple domes and um, circles that I did first. These are hearts. They're upside down, but they are hearts. And here, these are the uh, Mr. Greedy ones with the bellying out, which I like so much, and a couple more um, rolls. Uh, and the same thing goes on, is going on here. So we've got um, for the light around the flame, we've got simple um, loops just brought to a point a little bit with two rows of uh, crimping. Um, and then as we come down, you can see more hearts, a row of hearts here with some little loops between them. And these are uh, <laughs> Mr. Greedy's, but they're upside down. Um, then we have a row of simple um, loops and then I've had the same size loop but I've done them alternately so there's a more pointy one and then there's a dome and then there's a pointy and a dome etc. Um, and we have some more crimp that's on the looser the, uh, prongs, prongs that are a little bit further apart. And then similar to the one that I just showed you, I've been doing them in groups of, I think these were in groups of three so there's a long tall middle ones. Um, encasing these little sort of trefoil type things and some crimping to finish. So you know the more you put these different uh, patterns together the more interesting the whole thing becomes um, and the possibilities are endless. <laughs>